Welcome aboard Super Airlines Flight 470 en route to Cancun, Mexico. I'm sure you all are so excited to get your time in at your vacations and your tropical resorts. Here at Super Airlines, we know you'll be even more excited to know that we have a special surprise in store for you. Today, you're not just traveling to Mexico, you're also traveling to Germany, Rwanda, and Japan. Now, before you freak out, don't worry, you won't have to change your travel plans. That's because your journey today is not a literal journey, but a culinary one. If you haven't noticed already, Super Airlines is not a real airline, and this plane you just boarded has no wings. That's why your tickets were so affordable. But wait, 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 before you demand your refund, take a minute to look at the card in the seat back pocket in front of you, your menu. It shows you that today we are going to be exploring the world's cultures through soups, through Mexico, Germany, Rwanda, and Japan. Our first soup that our flight attendants will be handing out to you today is pozole, a soup native to Mexico. As you take your first spoonful of pozole, you will notice that the delicious red pork broth is filled with pork and pieces of puffy corn called hominy, which is native to central Mexico. This pozole you're enjoying is red pozole, but other varieties also exist, such as white pozole and green pozole. What do these colors combined represent? The Mexican flag, of course. However, pozole predates what we now know as Mexico, dating back to the ancient times of the Aztecs. Some rumors claim that the Aztecs used human sacrificial meat in their pozole instead of pork. However, according to Culture Trip, this has been proven false. So don't spit out your soup just yet. Today, my friend Andres Valdez Perez tells me that pozole is traditionally enjoyed at Mexican festivities, such as Christmas. It might not be Christmas now, but I'm sure you all agree that this po delicious pozole you're enjoying is quite a gift. Your flight attendants will now be... students that want to go to the cafeteria to pick up their lunch, you're free to do that now. Um, and then when you leave, your flight attendants will now be taking your empty bowls and replacing them with Kartoffelsuppe, or German potato soup. This soup is much thicker and is made with potatoes, seasonal vegetables, and Vienna sausages. No other soup could represent German so well, because Germany is obsessed with potatoes. According to German publisher DW, the average German consumes 143 pounds of potatoes every single year. This is in spite of the fact that potatoes are a relatively recent introduction to Germany. They're, the vegetable is not native to, to Europe, but it was instead traded there from South America during the 1600s. Today, Germans don't just consume their potatoes, they also produce them. In fact, they produce over 20% of Europe's entire potato crop. According to my friend Jonas Scheibe, Germans love to enjoy their, their Kartoffelsuppe all throughout the very cold fall and winter months. However, it can be any time of year to enjoy Germany when you can taste this delicious Kartoffelsuppe. Our next soup will be giving us a southward turn from Germany toward Rwanda with Isosi Yimboga, or Rwandan vegetable soup. Oh, what's that? You guys thought that Africa would be too hot to have soup? Well, think again because Rwanda is in a mountainous region of the continent where temperatures are regularly quite mild. Isosi Gimboga is made with a variety of vegetables that Rwandan farmers grow, such as peas, green beans, tomatoes, and onions. If you were to enjoy Isosi Gimboga in Rwanda, you would most likely have it in a buffet-style setting, which is common in homes and in restaurants. And according to my friend Isaac Nidagijimana, you would most likely have it with a more filling side dish of rice or potatoes. You'll notice, however, the lack of meat in this setup. That's because Rwandans have historically relied very little on meat. According to author Julius Adekunle, Rwandans, the largest Rwandan ethnic group, the Hutus, have historically almost relied entirely on vegetables for their diets. And even today, the average Rwandan only eats meat about once or twice a month. Rwandans have been doing plant-based since before it was cool. And perhaps this delicious Isosi Yimboga will inspire you to do the same. If you're feeling full from our last three soups, our final one is pretty light. 
Miso shiru or miso soup is extremely popular in our final destination of Japan. You'll notice the tofu and seaweed in a unique tasting broth made with miso paste. Miso paste is made from soybeans and a type of mold called koji, which is then fermented for several months. If this seems unappetizing to you, it's not to the Japanese. Um, miso shiru was invented in the eight, over 800 years ago in the age of the warring samurai. And today it is so popular that according to Kobe Jones, over three quarters of Japanese people have miso shiru at least once a day, if not with every meal. My brother, Makosa Jones, says that he likes to eat miso shiru for breakfast along with a side of rice. But wait, 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 you guys are doing this all wrong. Put down your spoons. The Japanese traditionally eat their miso shiru by drinking it with a good drink. So go on, slurp away, I won't judge. As we come to the end of this culinary journey, I'm sure that, that you all agree that the Mexican pozole, German kartoffel zuppe, Rwandan isosi yimboga, and Japanese miso shiru have made our journey very satisfying. What's that? You still want a refund? Threatening legal action? Well, that's such a coincidence because I actually have a very important meeting that starts right now that I have to leave for um, at this very moment. So uh, thank you for flying uh, Super Airlines and I'll see you never. <laughs>